My name is Peter Corney. On this videotape we're going to be talking about change, particularly the whole question of initiating change constructively in the local congregation. Every Australian has undergone massive change in the last 50 years. I can remember when we had an ice chest at home and the ice man came each day with a block of ice on his shoulder. In fact I can remember when my mother got our first refrigerator. She was so pleased, the first person in the street to have one. We've undergone some very difficult changes. Take the change from sterling to decimal currency. For many people that was quite a difficult thing. Changing years and years of thinking and understanding about a certain kind of currency. Think about the way we eat. A friend of mine used to run a European style restaurant back in the 60s in Melbourne and he tells me that in those days an average family ate out about three times a year. Now today the average family would eat out probably three times a week as well as take in takeaway at other times. We have undergone enormous change in those 50 years. Hugh Mackay, the Australian social researcher, says that we're living through such a time of massive social change that we are in fact reinventing Australia. We're reinventing the whole way we live, the way we shop, the way we bank, the way in which men and women relate to each other. Everything is being redefined. In the midst of this sea of change, our churches also are having to adjust a, a massive shift in people's lifestyles, their priorities, their tastes, their attitudes. For example, the change in the way in which people receive information through the communications and entertainment media has radically affected people's expectation of church. Of course, the questions go deeper than just the packaging and the technique. They raise deep theological issues for us. What should we adjust to as the people of God? What should we resist? What is an issue of substance and what is an issue of style? How distinctive should the Christian community be from its cultural setting? We know who we are partly by where we have come from and by preserving that story. In a period of massive and rapid change, the tension between cultural relevance and continuity with our history and tradition is acute and painful. On the other hand, the church always lives at a certain point in history and in a particular culture. This is no new tension, it's always with us. And if we refuse to understand our culture and learn how to communicate with it and learn how to express our faith and worship within it, then we become irrelevant a ghetto speaking only to ourselves. Many of our churches are experiencing cultural wars as the different generations fight over music and worship styles and methods of governance and leadership. The importance or the irrelevance of denominational distinctives. Often the pastor and other leaders get shot up in the crossfire as they attempt to negotiate change. Being a change agent is a dangerous business. In this video I want to suggest a few clues for initiating and managing change constructively in the local church. The first clue is that we have to help people understand the inevitability and in some ways the ordinariness of change. Change is part of life. We grow from a child to an adult we go through the passages of life. Everyone's experience of life means that they experience change. We need to help people to be aware of this and to tap into the changes in their own lives. If we're not changing, we're dead. Historical reflection will also show that every denomination has a history of change. Things were not always done the way they're done now. Identify some of these changes in your denomination. There was a time when Wesley's hymns were radical, 
when brass bands and bonnets were revolutionary. There was a time when lay involvement in ministry was a novelty. The second clue is that we must help people to understand that the gospel is about change. The gospel involves quite radical personal change. Reflect on some of the key ideas associated with the gospel. Forgiveness and reconciliation, the restoration of a relationship. Repentance, a complete change of direction. The new creation, regeneration. These are radical spiritual changes, renewal at the core of our being. Baptism, signifying death and new life. Resurrection, the great change. The third clue, leaders and change agents must understand the nature and the dynamics of change. This is especially important in institutions like the church that contain and convey people's beliefs and values. People are rightly hesitant about uncontrolled and over rapid change in our key social institutions. Unwise and unreflective change may cause the loss of crucial values and beliefs. Therefore most of us are cautious about change, particularly in these kinds of institutions. Some of the key dynamics in the process of change are these. Change disturbs people. It threatens us. It disorientates us. It creates confusion and anger and fear, insecurity. It causes loss and grief. It seems to declare some people irrelevant. Their experience and training and knowledge no longer valuable. They don't seem to fit anymore. These are all strongly negative feelings. But change also excites and challenges. And so for all of these reasons, we react to change more emotionally than reasonably. Managing change means dealing with people's emotions as well as their reason. Most people's initial response to change is cautious, resistance, that's normal. Some typical responses to change are these. Some people feel like victims. They're out to get me. Others develop a kind of survivor mentality. Well, I'll just have to put up with it, even though I don't like it. Others develop what we might call the resistance fighter mentality. If they think they're going to change me, they've got another thing coming. The idea that people will kind of fight this change to the death. Then there's the navigator response. We need to move on and discover new territory. Let's see how we can get there safely together. Now it's that final one, the navigator response, that we want to move most people towards. That is the most constructive way, the most constructive attitude to have to change.